Hey everyone, so initially this video started out as my review of Tekken 8. I know I'm like over a week late, but I wanted to talk about the game because I genuinely think Tekken 8 is an absolutely fantastic fighting game and truly is one of the first big highlights of 2024. However, as I was doing my review, the sort of topics I was talking about started morphing a little bit into more and more of a, like a rant, comparing Tekken 8 the fantastic features it brings and the completeness of this game to Mortal Kombat 1, which is I think one of the biggest personal disappointments I've had in a game over the last good few years. So what I thought I would do is instead of giving a review of Tekken 8, which well basically to sum up my review, the game is fantastic and if you are in any way a fighting game fan, play Tekken 8. If you're not, check out Tekken 8 as well because there are a ton of great offline features. That's besides the point. I wanted to compare this game to Mortal Kombat 1 because, again, I think this game completely blows MK1 out of the water. We have an actual complete content-rich fighting game right on release. There's a wealth of modes, both offline and online. The story mode and single player options are fun. Online works great. The practice options are fantastic and truly innovative. The game provides great ease of access to new players and actually does quite a lot to simplify the incredibly complex nature of Tekken for newcomers. There are more quality of life features in Tekken 8 than I can even list here. The fighting itself, gotta talk about that. I don't think I've played a fighting game since probably Mortal Kombat X that I've been so immediately in tune with. Tekken 8 sort of carries on that legacy of being very fast, very aggressive, and that sort of nature about being just in your opponent's face really does remind me of what MKX did and why I liked MKX so much. Comparing these two game series in their current state, it's not even a fair comparison. MK1, and even looking back further into the past, MK11, are looking like absolute hollow shells of their former selves. And I think there are a lot of reasons why Mortal Kombat as a franchise is going down this direction. I think there are some reasons that are not really in the control of NRS, and there are some factors which are actually, I think, the fault of NRS. And this is the topic I wanted to expand on and talk about a little bit. Is this video going to be ranty? Of course it is, but I hope you guys enjoy nonetheless and also enjoy the Tekken 8 gameplay in the background. Listen, I'm a complete noob at Tekken 8, uh, I don't claim to be good, but I am having an incredible amount of fun with this game. So let's talk about and examine the reasons why Mortal Kombat has fallen so far. Really, like I said, I think there are two big categories for the issues the game is suffering. Let's start out with the issues that I think are beyond NRS's control, and that issue can really be summed up with two words, WB Games. It's WB Games, and I think they are the ones that are really pushing MK in the wrong direction by focusing on making this game a live service experience. First of all, I gotta mention, live service and live service games are an absolute curse on the entire industry. It's one of the worst things to ever happen in the last couple of years of gaming. I mean, seriously, Fortnite and its influence has been an absolute disaster for the industry as a whole. WB Games essentially, I think, ruined MK1. I don't think it's hyperbolic to say that. And the reason I can confidently say that is because we have a brand new game that just released a couple of days ago, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, also published by WB Games, which is the exact same thing. It's a hollow, soulless sellout, essentially just a shit version of a formerly great franchise that has completely been destroyed. WB Games destroys studios like really the soulless, out of touch, money grabbing, capitalist hell corporation it is. All it wants is to inflict the curse of life service on everything, just gobble up everything and make it into a monetized mess. And this curse can be felt everywhere in that game and also in Mortal Kombat 1. Everybody knows Mortal Kombat 1 was rushed. It's very, very obvious. Because of the delay, this is the current theory, that because of the delay of Suicide Squad, WB wanted one big game for its 2023 release cycle, 
So really the theory is that they forced NRS to push MK1 out and crunch the game and really that can very clearly be felt. There are so many key features even nowadays that are missing from Mortal Kombat 1 and there were even more that were missing when the game launched. Instead, what do we have in MK? We have monetization out the ass. The entire practice of how monetization is set up in the game with the store, the fact that a $60 game or $70 game with really if you want the season pack, which at least most people I think are getting, it's like $110 plus fatalities, plus skins. The monetization is absolutely disgusting in this game. You have the incredibly grindy, boring invasion mode that I think no one, I mean no one enjoys. Everything is so clearly set up for it to be one of these soul-sucking live service games that it completely destroys the rest of the experience. It's extremely clear too that NRS are forced to focus on making skins and DLC characters instead of actually fixing the damn game. Seriously, it's no wonder the game's online was essentially broken for like what? I think like almost over a month and there was essentially no communication and no attempt to fix the game at all. I mean, going back to Tekken 8, Tekken 8 had issues on release with the servers. It took them like what, one and a half, two days to get a fix out and they were communicative throughout the whole time. The issue itself I think goes much deeper as well, going on to the pro scene and the fact that this is a fighting game, this is supposed to be a competitive fighting game that people go to tournaments for. Listen, MK1's pro scene is completely dead. I think you guys probably have, if you're keeping up with the game, have seen people make videos. The number of entrants at any of the big tournaments for MK1 are absolutely abysmal. And I think with the release of Tekken 8, it's going to get even worse. It's very unlikely, in my opinion, that the game will get a second pro season. And why is that? Because like I said, everything is focused on pushing out seasonal content and monetizing the hell out of everything. There are just so many games, MK1 included, that just work off of whales now. The tiny, rich, obsessed minority of fans who just basically buy everything Studios know, unfortunately, that this is what makes games profitable and it's very clear that this is the only thing they are focusing on. It's the only reason these games exist, just to suck as much money out of a small group of people as possible. Just comparing this to Tekken quickly. In Tekken 8 we have content. First of all, the game launched with 33 characters. 33 characters, just think about that. The issues with the online, like I talked about, were fixed almost immediately. Who knew that a game could release with the ability to crossplay from the get-go? We have the ability to immediately decline Wi-Fi players. We have a working connection filter from the get-go. We can queue for online while playing. Seriously, as I've said before, why is this not a feature in NRS fighting games? What's the point of not being able to practice while queuing for games? And guess what? This game also has customizations. It's what casuals love, there's no denying. I actually love customization as well. In fact, I would say that Tekken 8 has way more customization, more skins and more options than MK1 could ever have. And guess what? Most of the things within Tekken 8 can be earned through playing. Who knew? Well, that's a novel concept. Of course there's DLC, there's DLC for Tekken 8 as well, you can't deny that, but the focus is on producing actual characters instead of making you buy a fatality for $10. There are multiple types of story modes, single player content is not grindy, there's actually a good story mode here, uh, there isn't like 5 types of freemium currency, seriously man, this live service shit just needs to die. It's unfortunate that these types of games make so much money because as long as they make money, this is never ever going to change. Aside from the whole curse of live service and the issues with WB games, I think the second biggest issue when it comes to why MK1 is not in the best place is NRS's general philosophy when they are designing their fighting games. In my opinion, they play it way too safe. I know it's always been a case that Mortal Kombat appeals to casuals, but that doesn't always have to come with compromised gameplay. 
seriously, just think back, when was the last time that Mortal Kombat had something truly creative and something truly innovative that made you say, wow, you know, I've never seen this before in a fighting game? I think probably not since the variation system in MKX. Sure, that was a novel concept, I think it was a pretty unique thing, but since then, things have been just slowly going down the drain. Also in terms of style, Mortal Kombat 9 and Mortal Kombat X were lightning fast games. I don't know why, but NRS have been making their games slower and slower ever since then. You know, there's nothing wrong with a slower fighting game if you actually manage to make the gameplay still be interesting. Mortal Kombat unfortunately has just gotten more boring with every entry. It is currently by far the slowest main fighting game out there, even Street Fighter 6 has sped up its gameplay significantly compared to Street Fighter 5. And you know, with Tekken 8 and Street Fighter, the gameplay proves that you can have a fun, fast paced but still accessible fighting game. I think what NRS are afraid of is that a fast game will have a high skill ceiling, which is naturally going to push away the casuals. But that is not always the case. Tekken 8 very clearly showed you can be accessible to casuals and keep the game entertaining with fun offline modes, mini games, single player while remaining complex and fast, as well as appealing to serious players in every single way. Speed aside, I think what MK also suffers from is having very limited movesets for characters. The reason for that is because NRS for some reason redesigns their characters, aside from like a few key elements like Scorpion Spear, from the ground up for each entry. Seriously, I don't know why MK can't build on its legacy. It has like a 30 year legacy as well, just like Street Fighter and Tekken does. There's nothing wrong with using that to make more interesting moves as well as having a pool of moves to draw from as you are creating your games. And you know, even minor things like the replay mode in Tekken, the ghost mode, Mortal Kombat needs these types of innovations. It needs to be a little bit more varied instead of just being pretty to look at. I'd much rather they spend their massive budget, which I think is by far the biggest for any fighting game, on making actual new innovations and gameplay mechanics instead of focusing on producing three more skins. And with that, you know, the overall question is, can Mortal Kombat ever change? Unfortunately, I gotta be real here, I think in its current state, probably no. As long as WB Games controls the franchise, they are going to push the live service model, they are going to be focusing on wringing as much money out of Mortal Kombat as possible, instead of focusing on it being a legacy, classic fighting game which could be great. I mean MK could have its place within the fighting game genre. I don't think it's going to be different with WB games though. And also as long as NRS are content to play it safe, there are not going to be any innovations with the franchise. Whether they are actually forced by WB to tone down their games or not, I don't know, but it really does feel like NRS are playing it way too safe. I think unless something drastic happens and MK really flops, nothing is going to change. The issue with that is MK is still by far the most popular fighting game with the mass audience, so it's unlikely to ever actually lose money. The closest I can compare it to is COD. You know, I used to love COD as much as the next person, and essentially the two series are in the same kind of rut. COD is the same kind of hollow shell of a once great franchise, but the issue is the games just make too much goddamn money. No matter how many times people call out the shittiness of the games, the low effort, the glitches, the awful monetization, they just simply are too big of a cash cow for anything to change. As a long time Mortal Kombat fan, I don't want to write off the series, but currently, I gotta be honest with you, things are not looking good. The only thing I can hold on to as hope is that at least MKX is still active, there are still people online, matches are easy to find. I wish Mortal Kombat 9 was a little bit more accessible, but uh, that's also a fun game, I just wish there was actually a way to play it. Currently Street Fighter 6 and Tekken 8 are smashing it, so it's not like we have the th sort of death of the fighting game genre. In fact, the genre I would say is thriving. That's why it's such a shame that MK is not there with Among the Best. Hopefully one day the franchise will join the greats, until then we can play the old games and have actual fun with them 
because MKX is actually fun and we can enjoy the other fighting games which are great like Tekken 8, the game is absolutely fantastic and there will definitely be more Tekken content on the channel. Sorry that this video turned out so negative towards the end but I just wanted to talk about these because it really is an incredible comparison looking at these two franchises and their current states. So thank you guys very much for watching, hope you enjoyed and I hope to catch all of you next time. Peace out and goodbye.